Cannabis linked to epigenetic changes. Cannabis use can cause epigenetic changes. That's what a new study of 900 adults suggests. The epigenome acts as a set of switches, activating or deactivating genes and changing the way our bodies function. The new findings shed more light on the potential long-term effects of marijuana use. People have been using marijuana for thousands of years. However, it is now illegal in many countries. Some countries, such as some US states, have legalized marijuana in recent years. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention data for 2019, 48.2 million people, about 18% of all Americans, admitted to using marijuana. However, the health consequences of using a stimulant are not well understood. Despite its growing popularity, as well as recent legalization by several states, the effects of marijuana on epigenetic factors have not been well studied. We have previously identified links between marijuana use and aging, captured through DNA methylation. We wanted to further investigate whether specific epigenetic factors were associated with marijuana and whether these factors influence health outcomes. Said Le Fang Hao of Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Molecular Psychiatry. In their work, the researchers analyzed blood samples taken five years apart from people who had previously participated in a coronary heart disease risk development study. The analysis covered samples of over 900 people. In addition, each participant was asked if they used marijuana, and if the answer was yes, the next questions were about how often they use it. The researchers then estimated the amounts ingested by the subjects and then ran DNA methylation profiling on their blood samples to reveal epigenetic changes associated with marijuana use. DNA is sometimes seen as a code that we already have permanently, but the expression of some genes can be influenced by epigenetic changes that are influenced by lifestyle, life experiences and the environment we inhabit. Epigenetic modifications do not change the fundamental sequence of our DNA. You could say that they make additional changes that affect how these DNA sequences are read by the cellular machinery. Epigenetic modifications to DNA have profound effects on development, disease, and most biological traits throughout life. One of the best studied epigenetic changes is the aforementioned DNA methylation, which often suppresses the activity of certain genes. In this process, methyl groups, molecules consisting of one carbon atom and three hydrogen atoms, are added to DNA molecules, thereby altering gene expression. As a result, Scientists were able to link marijuana use to changes in the human epigenome. We've seen associations between marijuana use and multiple epigenetic markers. But additional research is needed to replicate and validate these findings, said Howe, co-author of the study. Researchers have observed DNA methylation markers associated with recent and long-term marijuana use. Many epigenetic changes have been linked to cell proliferation, hormonal signaling, infections, and mental health disorders such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, 
and addiction-related disorders. Interestingly, we consistently identified one marker that was previously associated with tobacco use, suggesting a potential common epigenetic regulation between tobacco and marijuana use. While the research does not establish a causal relationship between marijuana use and epigenetic changes, or between these changes and the observed health effects, the findings may be useful in future research into the epigenetic effects of marijuana use. These studies have provided new insights into the relationship between marijuana use and epigenetic factors. Additional work is needed to determine whether these associations are consistently observed across populations. Moreover, studies evaluating the effects of marijuana on age-related health outcomes may provide further insights into the long-term health effects of marijuana, said Drew Nanini an assistant professor in Howe's lab and first author of the study. Nematodes can sniff out tumors. New research has shown that nematodes can distinguish between molecules released by healthy cells and cancer cells. This gives a chance to use these tiny creatures in diagnosing cancer at an early stage. Dogs can use their amazing sense of smell to detect various forms of cancer from breath, blood or urine. As it turns out, a similar ability is also possessed by a much simpler organism, Kynorhabditis elegans. This nematode, as experiments in the laboratory have shown, can distinguish between molecules released by healthy cells and cancer cells, and it targets the latter. Kynorhabditis elegans can grow up to 1 mm in length. It inhabits temperate soils and feeds on microorganisms, including bacteria used in laboratories, such as colobacillosis. These inconspicuous creatures have been used as model organisms in research on aging processes for years. Now researchers have developed a device that uses these tiny organisms to detect lung cancer cells. In this way, nematodes can serve humanity as an aid in non-invasive diagnosis of cancer at an earlier stage. The research results were presented at the meeting of the American Chemical Society ACS, in San Diego. Early diagnosis of cancer is crucial for successful treatment and significantly increases the chances of recovery. Ideally, cancer detection methods should be quick, easy, cheap and non-invasive. As for lung cancer, it is currently diagnosed by imaging or biopsy, but these methods often fail to detect tumors at an early stage. Scientists from Korea's Myeongji University decided to use nematodes that have an extraordinary smell in this field. Lung cancer cells produce a different set of odor molecules than normal cells, said Shin Sik Choi, who led the research. It is well known that soil nematodes, C. elegans, are attracted or repelled by certain odors, so we came up with the idea of using them to detect lung cancer, he added. Earlier, other research groups observed that nematodes placed in petri dishes in the presence of urine of cancer patients and healthy people, crawled towards urine samples of cancer patients. Korean researchers used this behavior of nematodes to create a test based on it. 
The researchers made a polydimethylsiloxane elastomer chip that had a well at each end connected by channels to a central chamber at one end. The researchers added a drop of medium from lung cancer cells, and at the other end, medium from normal lung fibroblasts. They placed the nematodes in the central chamber and after an hour they observed the small creatures crawling towards the tumor medium. Based on subsequent experiments, the scientists determined that the device has about 70% effectiveness in detecting cancer cells in diluted cell culture media. This is not enough to be used as a medical test. But the researchers want to increase the sensitivity of the method by using creatures that have already been exposed to cancer cells and thus have a memory of tumor-specific odor molecules. Once the team has optimized their assay to detect cultured lung cancer cells, they plan to move on to testing people's urine, saliva and even exhaled breath. We will work with doctors to find out if our methods can detect lung cancer in patients at an early stage, says Choi. The researchers also plan to test the device on other forms of cancer. Korean scientists have also identified a compound that attracts C. elegans to lung cancer cells, a volatile organic compound called 2-ethyl-1-hexanol with a floral scent. We don't know why C. elegans are attracted to lung cancer tissue or 2-ethyl-1-hexanol, but we suspect that the odors are similar to those of their favorite food, says Jan. Ultimately, scientists want to create a device that uses nematodes to diagnose lung cancer based on urine or saliva samples.